Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock. I am going to be coloring a beautiful vase of flowers with my colored pencils for you today. I bought a cute little stamp set from Technique Tuesday that has these flowers in a little jar and I wanted to color it up for you today. I stamped it in craft ink on toned drawing paper. And on the bottom side, I stamped just the vase portion lighter than the rest of the stamping. So I just stamped several times to get the top part darker than the bottom. I decided I wanted to make one of these flowers a pansy. So I'm transforming this flower from the shape that it is into a pansy. I've pulled up a picture on the internet of a pansy and I looked for what the colors were. I looked for the shapes of the petals and they have different petals. It's one of the things I like about pansies is they have, you know, each one can have totally different patterns on them just within the same flower. And there are some flowers where every, every one of the petals has the same markings, but not these in many cases. And I didn't have a pencil that matched the type of purple I was looking for. So I just layered some blue over top of a purple in order to make the kind of purple that I needed. And then here I put some dark blue over top of some purple to make it even darker, darker. You can do all kinds of things when you're doing no line coloring like this. That's one of the things I love about it. Stamp in any kind of lighter color than black and then your colored pencils are going to go right over top of it and you won't see anything under it. It gives you the general shape, but you can make those petals do whatever you want because you're in control of whatever your coloring is. And pick out your favorite flower and just create something that wasn't there before. That's what I love about art is that we get to make things that weren't in existence before. We don't have to worry about what the artist made with the stamp, we can create something additional to that. The rest of the flowers, I'm zooming through really quickly because I'm just coloring the shapes that are already there. I decided not to transform them all because this would require trying to figure out how to turn the pansy the other direction. And that just seemed a little complex for my brain the day I was doing the coloring. But I did keep everything in that purple grouping, that purple colorway. So one was a, a more reddish purple on the left and up here on this top flower, it's got more white in it. So I was just trying to find different flowers. I couldn't find what kinds of flowers these were, but I tried to find different pictures of flowers that I could do some color matching to. So I just looked for purple flowers on the internet and picked some that looked like they were generally these. I don't know what breeds of flowers they were. Are, are flowers breeds? Species, I don't know what the word is for it. There might be a word for it, but nonetheless. The rest of the leaves, I let be really pretty simple. I let all of them be the same green, and then I just added some shading on each one, and the stems are using the darker color just to give a little bit of contrast. But if you really wanna get into it, you could make each one of those look like they're from different types of plants, and have different types of greens in them. Now when it comes to the bowl down here, there's a few things that I did as adaptations because I'm doing this as no line coloring and I know my pencil is gonna cover right over top of things. There's a little thing down there in the stamp set, I wasn't really positive what exactly was going on there, so I just made it a leaf instead. And I also decided to add more stems because there are so many flowers in this, having just one or two stems didn't make a lot of sense to me. So as an artist, you can add whatever you want to a stamp. So I, I also decided then to try to make the stems look like they're going into the water. So a few of them, I made them have darker areas that stopped at the top level of the water. So the bottom part of the stems that are under the water are lighter. And then I can go over the, the whole water with a light blue, just not with a lot of pressure, just a little bit of light blue. And there's a whole lot of ways you can handle water. I'm not gonna get into that a whole lot of detail because it's really challenging. It depends on what's behind 
the water itself, what's behind the jar, because technically, if this was all actually blue water, it would be on a blue surface. It reflects whatever is behind it, the, the physical table or whatever is behind the jar. So we're just going to call it blue water for now. We're just going to let it be what it is. I'm going to add some white pencil in a few areas. I'm adding a little bit of roundness to the bottom, to the, the place where that you can see the bottom of the vase and that sort of thing, adding a little bit of white across the whole thing to lighten it. So if you end up getting something a little too dark, you can certainly lighten it because you can just color one layer of pencil over top of the other to get it just the right shade that you want. And so I'm focusing on trying to get that, that bottom section to be brighter than it is because it, it was just feeling like I'd, I'd overdone the blue. Since I'm doing this on tone paper, white is going to show up more. It's one of the reasons I did it on tone paper because I wanted to use some white pencil. And I can go over some areas on the top, including crossing some of the areas where the, the stems are, so it looks like the glass is in front of the stems themselves. For the reflection down at the bottom, I'm going to put some of the blue in there that's in the, the water above and then add to it a little bit of a table surface. Not equal, equal with the bottom. I have it, you can see it's a little bit above the base of the vase itself. So it doesn't look like it's sitting, teetering on the edge of a table. And then used a little bit of a blending stump to blend those colors and then put a little bit of the table color across that reflection because I don't want too much focus to be on that. If a reflection were coming down off of that, it wouldn't be a really bright reflection necessarily. So I put a couple layers of paper behind my panel, a uh, black and a dark green, and then put it all on a purple card base so that all those colors would just pull together. I did have to cut my card base a little bit thinner to accommodate the long tall nature of the, the panel that I cut out, which just makes it that much more unique. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. There's more information on supplies, etc., over on the blog, as well as supply list in the doobly doo down below. And I will see you again very soon for another video. Take care. Bye bye.